Hello and welcome to C Sharp Programming Project Based Learning Course. This course is brought to you by huntforcode.blogspot.com under the project Programming Project School. In this course, we are designing records management application using C Sharp Programming and MySQL database programming in the Microsoft Visual Studio environment. We have completed the design process for the login form and now we will be starting the coding process. If you have not watched the previous lectures then visit the playlist which is shown in front of you and watch this course from the start. Now coming towards the lecture, in this lecture you will learn how to code for the timer. Now I will show you how to code for the timer, this timer to and also code coding for the date level and also the, the time level to show the updated date and time and also we will include a close button here and this close button will be used to close this application. Now coming towards the coding process first of all we will have to design a close button here and we will include a picture box so going towards the uh, toolbox and now uh, selecting a picture box there and then bringing it here and moving it here and then selecting an image which I have already uh, the image we have which I have already designed so this is the close button and with this close button we will code for this close button and we will close the application so we will select and this close button will be used to close our application now resizing it playing with its size mode and then making it of small size so it, it can look better so now it is looking better and and also looking very pretty so we will use this for the for the closing for closing this application now first of all in the first of all let us click the uh, going to the coding process so let us double click this login button to code for this log to call all this process so first of all in the public login form after the initialize component write the code for the timer as I have already uh, given the name to the timer and now going to the public login form and and, uh, and after the initialize component we have to start the timer because when this login form loads then timer should start then timer has a, has a method called start method so uh, by using this method the timer will start and it will tick one by one second one second uh, it will take after every one second and will uh, give us the the time level a, a look of a real clock so <clears throat> now is also uh, the timer uh, also for the timer as i already explained it in the previous lecture the interval for the timer is 1000 millisecond so that's why it will take uh, every after every one second if we uh, if <coughs> if we select the interval of we, if we make the interval more than uh, 1000 millisecond or less than less than, less than 1000 millisecond then it, it will tick according to this mean that 1000 uh, 1000 millisecond is equal to 1 second so it will tick after every 1 second now as we have the date level any time level and we want to show the exact the updated date and time date and time means the, the, the time and date uh, which is shown uh, in your computer now this so we should display this date and time here in this uh, in this application so for doing this uh, we have a structure called date and time and we will use its uh, we have a structure which is called date and time and we will use its property we will use its property and the property is now property to display the date date and time which is now displaying on in your computer 
so we create a date time variable also first of all we should create an event an event for the timer and this this is the tick event because because uh, because by using this tick event uh, we we can get the updated date and time so first uh, so then we have a structure called date and time structure date and time writing it so this is the date and time structure and it has a uh, property called now so by using this property we, we will uh, we can display the updated date and time so we will create the date time date date time variable and we will uh, give this variable a name date and time and then date sorry date time now now using the name of the structure because uh, it is same like we are creating an object and so now 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 calling the the method date the now method of the date and time so we have called the now the now method of the date and time to display the updated date and time and then now if we have got the current date and time in the date and time variable so by using uh, by creating this variable this date and time variable we we have got the updated date and time in this variable and it is uh, um, um, as, as you know, know know the variables uh, this that this date and time is stored in this date and time date in, in this date and time variable now to display in the in these two labels display the date in this label and uh, and, and, time, and time in this label so we should use two other properties and we will work with the text property of these labels now to display the current date uh, now to display the current date in the date label we should write uh, we should work with the text property of the date label is uh, we have already uh, created a name for date label date label sorry i have um, given its a name of data label so we should correct it this this should be date label now and uh, now working with the text property date label dot text and sorry date label dot date label dot text and is equal to is assigned to date and time dot to long to long date string date as we have created the date and time variable so date date and this is the date and time variable and then calling it's uh, calling a calling a method to long date string and it will display a date in the long format means it will display day along with the, along with the month along with the, the um, today date and along with the year like today is a uh, like today is uh, th uh, friday and uh, 4th november 2016 then it will display like this i will show you and also working with the time label the text property of the time label to display the current time the updated time so time label dot text is equal to date and time dot to long time string and it will display a timer like in uh, it will display the hours also the minutes and also it will display second and the second will be ticking every time you and it, it will it will uh, provide us just a look of it uh, um, uh, simple digital clock so that's all for the date and time now is we have created the even for login form so we should uh, remove it because it will give us error and then saving it and now i think I, I i will show you that what's the whole process i have done and what what, what will be its result now it will take some time so now is we have written the code for the 
date label time label and also we have inserted a close button a picture box and we'll use it for the close button also we have started the timer I think it is uh, getting more time than it than is uh, I, I, I have thought then look at this what I have um, uh, told you that it will display the in in a date in a, uh, in a type of long string like it will display the Friday November month in the in a, in a string type and also November 4 2016 and also as I have suggested and it is taking like it is working like a digital clock so now if we have not coded for the close button so it will not work so now stopping it and and now um, coding for the this close button so now first of all we should give its a name and its name should be name picture uh, close picture box close picture box you should use the uh, camel case notation for, for for naming conventions to be camel case notation because it seems better and uh, you can understand because it works better in coding in C sharp coding and other coding so it is a better format as compared to other notations you can use any type of notation but is most of the developers are using this type of notation so you can use and then working with the click event is and this click event when we click the close button then it will close the whole application and then we have a code and this is the application and we have a method called exit so it will exit the application gracefully so now to exit the gracefully exit the application we would write the code which is application dot exit sorry dot exit and it will gracefully exit our application now let's run the application and i will show you uh, first of all saving this application and now run the application and first of all i will show you that how it works so that's the date label showing the current date and that's a time timer time label showing the current time and that's the close button and uh, now pressing it clicking on it and it will it has closed our application and that's work very fine so i think we have designed our uh, login our, our login form up to some extent and uh, the next we will design the user id uh, we, we will code for the login button also for the sign up button and also for some type of uh, coding for the uh, user id and also for the password so watch the next lecture so now so thank you for watching this lecture hopefully you have you would have learned the coding process for the date label for the time label and how to use the timer and how to code for the close button it is a simple coding but I think uh, I have given you, you an idea and it will help you in your long run. Now if you have liked my lecture and then and want more lectures and curious about the developing, developing the whole application then press the big red subscribe button on the right side. Also if you have any questions then you can comment it down here. I will try my best to solve your problems. Also, is this channel is only for you. So, if you have any suggestions to make this course much better, this course is in the recording process. So, I will appreciate all your suggestions. Also, you can like our Facebook page and can join our Facebook group for much more interaction. Thank you again. Stay tuned and wait for the next lecture. Until then, happy coding.